recognize. Good morning, students, parents, faculty, staff, and distinguished guests. My name is Heather Zolnowski, and I am the Executive Director of the Benjamin Franklin Classical Charter Public School. It is my distinct honor to welcome you today to our final day of capstone presentations. I could not be more proud of the 52 eighth grade students who have been sitting in front of us over the last three days. Their hard work, dedication, and caring spirit has guided them here today, where they will share with us an individually planned and executed community service project that they have successfully completed. 15 months ago, most of these students began this intensive project. They have worked through the steps of brainstorming, researching, developing and executing a project that they feel passionate about to support an organization or raise awareness of a specific cause that is important to them. Over the past two days, we had the privilege of listening to the work of these amazing students accomplished through their hard work and dedication, and today we get to hear from our last two groups. Mahatma Gandhi tells us to be the change we wish to see in the world. We will today hear from a group of students who have dedicated their time to the service of others and in that process learned about themselves and in their own way have changed the world around them. You will hear about their projects, the organizations they worked for, the goals they set for themselves, the obstacles they faced in striving to reach their goals, and what they learned in the process. It has been said that one individual who is determined to make a difference in the world can, with the desire, drive, dedication, discipline, passion, and persistence, be that change that they want to see. The world can be altered, and billions of people's lives can be impacted positively in an unimaginable way. Just imagine the impact that these 52 young men and women have had on this world. I promise you that after hearing from these students, that you will not only be as proud of them as we are today, but you will be inspired by their stories you hear, the goals they have reached, and the impact they have had on their local, national, and global communities. Today we are very lucky to be joined by both State Representative Jeff Roy and State Representative Michael Soder to our school this morning. Representative Roy's district includes our students from both Franklin and Medway. Representative Soder's district includes our students from Bellingham, Blackstone, and Millville. On behalf of our entire school community, I'd like to thank you both for your recent support of the Historic Student Opportunity Act. This bill will provide a much needed increase in funding for all our public schools, including the students here at BFCCPS. We're honored to have you both here today to learn more about the outstanding work being done throughout the community by these students. Thank you. Without further ado, I would like to introduce Mr. Afonso, whose group will be going first today. Yeah. Uh, so before I begin my speech, um, my group needs to do something very important. I read some Stanford-based research recently that if you hold your arms straight up for at least 30 seconds, you'll feel more confident with whatever stressful situation you're about to endure. They're going to do that now, as well as any other presenters today. I don't know. Good morning, students, faculty, and parents. I have the unique honor of introducing my group to deliver their final capstone presentations. It has been a long, arduous, and oftentimes strange journey. I know that my advisees are all happy to have this process over today, but it is a little bittersweet for me. Because while I never again have to deal with Neil arguing with me about whether or not typing one sentence constitutes real work, <laughs> Izzy's weekly freakouts about the awful state of her speech, Emma's constant complaining that she finished her entire project in May and that she had no obstacles, which in itself is in fact an obstacle. <laughs> Timmy's timminess. <laughs> Jake's growing insanity. Or Ashley's silent disapproval of all the aforementioned things. I realize that those are the things that made our group so unique. Because for all of the annoyances we all dealt with each week, I've never been part of a group that was more supportive of each other. We weren't exactly singing Kumbaya in a circle, nor did we have some deranged fox mascot named Chi or something. But I did get to watch all these advisees grow as people over the past year and a half, not just as students. It is our support of each other that made us who we are, and I think that's why we all ended up arguing like brothers and sisters, myself included. It's also why I know now for sure that I do not want children of my own. <laughs> and so 
yes, we are a strange little bunch, but we were all there to pick each other up when others were not at their best, and we're ready to celebrate each other's successes. A special shout out to Sid and Tanya for their tireless efforts and support of their fellow advisees in any way they could possibly offer. Today, you each walk out of here a little closer to becoming the best version of yourselves. Not because of your presentations, not because of the hard work you put in, but because of how you got here. You learned to treat each other with respect and dignity. Perhaps more importantly, several of you learned to treat yourselves with respect and dignity too. You all made this happen for yourselves and for each other, and for that, I'm sincerely proud of all of you. Before I, I'm not done. <laughs> Before I introduce the first speaker, I want to quickly thank a few people who helped me and my group get here. Mrs. McGraw and her advising group, Mrs. Kaplan and Mrs. Sunday, the other 8th grade advisors that were not already mentioned, and of course, for his constant support in helping me stay calm and collected this week, Mr. Byrne. Now let the games begin. First up, please welcome Emma Ferreira. Six people die every day from unhealthy alcohol usage. Every six seconds, someone is badly harmed by smoking. Constantly, teens are hurting themselves and their futures through vaping, some of whom are dying. These are all important issues, but what about drowning? Dying from drowning is just as important as an issue of all of these other causes, and yet it is still one of the lesser known ones. Did you know 10 people drown per day of not having experience around or in the water? My name is Emma Ferreira, and for my capstone project, I focused on drowning prevention. Drowning is the third most common unintentional, un unintentional death-related accident among children younger than four in the United States. Drowning can be easily prevented, and swim lessons reduce this risk by 88%. Some children, under a variety of circumstances, are not exposed to the opportunity of swim lessons, which is truly heartbreaking. As a competitive swimmer, I have extensive experience around the water, so this is a concern that is very meaningful to me. If every child could receive the experience they deserve, they would obtain the opportunity to be water safe all the time. To approach this issue, I worked with the USA Swimming Foundation, a nonprofit organization that works nationally to promote swim lessons and water safety to individuals of all ages. For my first capstone goal, I raised awareness to younger students about the causes and factors that lead to drowning. The USA Swimming Foundation sent me a story that I read to students in grades K through two about the importance of water safety. After reading the story, I asked them questions about the book and distributed cards with information pertaining to my organization that listed where to get enrolled in local swimming lessons. In total, I raised awareness to 150 K through two students, and out of those 150, many showed an interest and decided to register themselves in swim lessons nearby. For my second capstone goal, I wanted to donate my time through volunteering. To pursue this goal, I researched locations that would allow me to interact with children and gain experience with water safety. After contacting several locations, I found the Gulfbridge Swim School in Milford. The school provided me with the amount of volunteering I had wished for and was extremely reliable with responding back to me. Towards the end of June, I volunteered nine hours in total, my original goal. Overall, my time volunteering taught me how to work well with kids and how to interact with younger children in the water. For my third and personal goal, I determined I wanted to become properly CPR and first aid trained. Being CPR trained can save lives in a matter of seconds. 70% of Americans feel helpless to act in the event of a cardiac emergency because they do not know how to effectively administer CPR. After taking the course, I kept track of how it is positively contributing to the safety of the people around me. I started this goal off by finding nearby places that would allow me a CPR and first aid certification. I achieved my certification through the American Heart Association course located in Milford. The course was four hours long and I completed it during the summer. After the course, I logged every time my training happened to be beneficial. For example, I helped my sister one day when she fell over on her bike, and I even helped a lifeguard at my neighbor's pool. Being trained also reassured adults that I was qualified to take care of their children. Whether it be babysitting or in the pool, I found my certification to be extremely impactful. During my three goals, I faced a few obstacles that I eventually overcame. Prior to conducting my second goal of volunteering, my unpredictable summer schedule complicated the process of finding dates and times that worked for me and for Goldfish Swim School. Fortunately, after organizing a meeting with Lauren, the head of Goldfish Swim School, we sat down until we found three days that worked accordingly alongside both of our schedules. While formulating my personal goal, I struggled to find something I wanted to achieve for myself that wasn't too common or too minimal. 
After a few weeks of brainstorming with my advisor group, it became very clear procrastination was not an option, so I decided to become certified in CPR and first aid assistance instead. Overall, I believe I can conclude that my project has been a success. Throughout my time of educating myself and the people around me, I now know for myself and hopefully others too that supporting water safety and promoting drowning prevention is incredibly important. Before I conclude my project, there are a few people I would like to thank. First and foremost, I would like to thank Mr. Afonso, my advisor, for guiding me through the project, my advisor group for all the assistance and support they gave me, my parents for giving me rides and keeping me on track, Lauren Moore, who helped me become connected with children learning how to swim, and at last, my friends, for all the positivity and encouragement they granted me alongside this journey of mine. Thank you all so much for attending and listening to my presentation. Have a great rest of your day. Please welcome Tanya Kumar. children around the world are in inadequate housing. About 300 million children lack a proper education. Just in the U.S. alone, 10 to 20 million children and adolescents have some sort of chronic illness. Children are called the present. They represent the future. So shouldn't they all get the same opportunity at life? Good morning, everyone. My name is Tanya Kumar. And for my capstone, I decided to help kids in need. However, to truly accomplish what I wanted to do, I decided to not limit myself to one organization, and instead chose two, Birthday Wishes and St. Jude's. St. Jude's is a research hospital that helps kids and their families who are dealing with cancer. They charge no fee for treatment, as they believe that the parent's biggest worry should be their child. Birthday Wishes is an organization that throws birthday parties for homeless kids. I chose to work with these organizations because I felt as though their missions aligned with my own. For my first goal, I had originally planned on selling popcorn at the farmer's market and asking the younger kids to make cards for the kids at St. Jude. I planned to use Double Good, an organization that donates 50% of the funds you get to an organization of your choice. However, once I actually read the directions on the site, I realized that there was no way I could do that, and instead sold popcorn in my neighborhood. I had also planned to ask the younger kids to make cards for the kids at St. Jude, but ended up dropping it, due to the fact that my connections at St. Jude told me that the restrictions on the cards that I could not meet. In the end, by going to my neighborhood and beyond, I ended up raising $330 for St. Jude, exceeding my original goal of $150. To help birthday wishes, I had originally planned to hold a raffle for a giant stuffed animal and attend their cakewalk where I would become a cakewalk ambassador. Unfortunately, my email from the organization regarding this event had been misplaced, and I did not hear about the actual date for the cakewalk until it was too late. I had also planned to hold a raffle for a giant stuffed animal at the new school, but it soon became clear that my idea to raffle off a giant stuffed animal was not nearly as unique as I thought it would be. Not only that, but it seemed as though every other person had decided to hold a raffle around the same time. I eventually ended up with the Teacher's Blue Hair competition. This was where students brought in money for the teacher whose hair they wanted to dye blue. At the end of the week, the three teachers who had received the most funds had to dye their hair. This turned out to be a better choice, at least in my opinion. Sorry, Mrs. Kovac. <laughs> because I ended up raising $405, which was better than my original goal of 100. For my third and personal goal, I thought about working on time management, but due to the fact that Mr. Fonso made it very clear that that was not an option, and because I wanted a goal that I could actually accomplish, I planned to volunteer at organizations that helped kids, such as tutoring clubs and camps. However, due to limited volunteering opportunities, and the fact that the clubs were further away than I thought they would, they were, I ended up switching my personal goal to volunteering at local organizations such as the library, the Franklin Food Pantry, and the Senior Center. Though I really only ended up volunteering at the library, I still got seven hours of volunteering in, which passed my original goal of six. 
Like any capstone project, I dealt with many obstacles along the way. I, first, I had no idea what I wanted my goals to be. Though I had a fair idea of what I wished to accomplish, putting these into actual goals was extremely hard. Another problem I faced was switching my goals. I ended up changing my goals multiple times, but I do think the goals I ended up with were the best choice. I also had trouble communicating with my organization, and sometimes due to lack of communication or my busy schedule, I had to miss events that I had planned to attend. Of course, no capstone project is complete without a healthy dose of procrastination, and no one does it more than yours truly. But we really don't have to talk about that. Let's just say that it was a very stressful Overall, I have to say Capstone wasn't half bad. Of course, there were complications, but it was not nearly as daunting as I thought it would be. And now, of course, the big question. Did I accomplish what I wanted to do? And the answer is not so straightforward. While I might have raised hundreds of dollars and in the process a lot of awareness, I don't really know but can only hope that what I really wanted to accomplish occurred. But regardless of the amount of money and awareness I raised, my goal was to make a kid's life a little better. So if I helped a single kid with his surgery, or the money I raised made one kid's birthday party a little better, then I accomplished what I set out to do. Of course, this capstone journey would have been impossible without the long list of people who helped me along the way. I'd like to start by thanking my parents. They dealt with all of my last minute plans with only a bit of hesitation. I would also like to give a sincere thank you to Liz Marino and Dee Dee Varaya from Birthday Wishes and my contacts at St. Jude. A huge thanks to my advising group and my advisor, Mr. Afonso, who made sure I never got too behind on my assignments. I would also like to thank all the teachers who participated in the Teachers Blue Hair competition and for Mrs. Kovacs for being an amazing sport when she won. I would like to thank my friends as they somehow kept my nervous breakdowns under control and Ashley Guaman because advising would have been a whole lot more boring without her. Remember, as the great Jamie Palendi said, Limi limitations live only in our mind, but if we use our imaginations, our possibilities become limitless. Thank you, and stay motivational, Ben Franklin. Welcome, Isabel Mitchell. Education. It is something that is viewed as the norm in our country. In fact, it can be dismissed by some as a daily burden, even a waste of time. And we often take it for granted. But education has the ability to dispel ignorance, making way for innovation and change, making way for the future. It is a spark that ignites curiosity in future scientists, writers, and leaders. Thomas Jefferson once said, to penetrate and dissipate the clouds of darkness, the mind must be strengthened by education. Today, we need this more than ever. Good morning, everyone. My name is Isabel Mitchell, and for my capstone project, I chose to work towards improving girls' education rights, but she's the first, an organization dedicated to supporting girls around the world in their pursuit for education. They team up with local organizations in underprivileged countries to ensure that girls have the resources they need to complete a full education. From the very beginning of the Capstone Project, I knew that this is what I wanted to focus my project on. Education has always been such a significant part of my life, and I believe it is something everyone should have the opportunity to experience. Yet, over 300 million girls and women around the world experience appalling obstacles, ranging from cultural gender bias to war, that prevent them from even getting a basic education. I wanted to bring attention to this with my Capstone. For my first goal, I organized and led a month-long STEM group for young girls at our school in grades 3 through 5. This club was free because I wanted to make the STEM group available to all who wanted to participate, to reach and inspire as many girls as possible. And it would have been pretty ironic for me to charge considering my whole project is about helping the underprivileged. A total of 38 girls signed up for the club, surpassing my original goal of 8, which at first seemed ridiculously overwhelming, but with the incredible help of Mrs. Erkovic and a few of my amazing friends, we were somehow able to manage through all the tears, screaming, and teeth. The club met five times throughout the month of October for an hour and a half after school. The girls voted to build avalanche barriers as their project. They learned about the science behind avalanches and real-life barriers. They also learned about and applied the engineering design process and built their own barriers using basic materials. I also collected donations, raising a total of $120. Despite the late nights I spent organizing, planning lessons, collecting materials, communicating with parents, and more, 
I would not trade the experience for anything else. I learned so much, like apparently lesson plans are actually something you have to do. <laughs> Teachers, I sympathize. It was so rewarding and is something I will never forget. For my second goal, I wanted to spread awareness about this issue around my neighborhood. I went with my little brother Nicholas in May, passing out flyers with information about my project and educating my neighbors about my cause. I also collected donations, raising a total of $155. For my third goal, I wanted to raise money for my organization through tutoring. I felt that tutoring was a way to both raise funds and awareness for my cause while also helping others. I tutored four different people, raising $80 for my organization. From the very beginning, Mr. Fonda made it very clear to us that procrastination was not an option to have some personal goal. That did not go down well with many people, including me. I had what some may call the worst procrastination problem ever. So I decided to focus on what was a large component of that problem, my phone. At the start of the project, I spent an average of about four and a half hours a day recreationally on my phone. This not only hugely contributed to my procrastination, but also took away from other things I wanted to be doing, like going outside, practicing instruments, and spending time with family and friends. Using the app time limit feature on the iPhone, I sought to spend under two hours per day on my phone. I gave the bypass password to my friend Lorelai, who I knew would be relentless in giving it up. And relentless she was. There were some very heated arguments that took place over this, as you can see by these highly sophisticated text conversations. Fortunately, I pulled through, and I would say I saw a significant increase in both my productivity and my general welfare as an effect of this goal. I am very happy with that, and I plan to continue using the feature going forward. Throughout my project, I faced various obstacles. With my first goal, I had initially planned to host my club after school at the Franklin Library in May, but their limited schedule availability set my timeline back significantly, and I ended up pushing the club to until the fall and hosting at the new school. Originally with my tutoring goal, I advertised a tutor in the summer as it worked best with my schedule, but I did not receive any requests prompting me to advertise into the school year. This was effective and I was able to tutor four students. Overall, I believe my project was a success. I raised a total of $355 for Sheet the First and exceeded all of my goals. I believe that both through these donations and the other aspects of my project, I made an impact. Though it was definitely hard and felt impossible at times, Capstone was such a fulfilling and rewarding experience. I have grown and learned so much from it, and I'm so appreciative that I was able to make a difference towards a cause I am passionate about. Before I leave you today, there are a few people who made this project possible that I would like to thank. First, thank you to my incredible advising group for helping me through this whole process, my parents for driving me across the continent and back, my entire family, especially Nick, for being with me the whole way, and she's the first for allowing me to work with you towards such an amazing cause. Special thanks to my demon darlings, Lorelai, Leah, Nabila, and Lauren, for helping me to do the impossible and somehow keeping me sane. To Mrs. Erkovic for always being there for me and being the best mentor I could have asked for. And last, but certainly not least, my incredible advisor, Mr. Afonso. I know it is said often, but it could not be more true in this instance that I could not have gotten through it without you. And finally, I want to say thank you to you all for listening to all of us. If you take one thing away from these presentations, I want it to be this. I want you to know that anyone can make a difference. I know it can oftentimes be discouraging when it's so hard to see the impact one person has on the world. But big or small, everyone who has presented these past few days put everything they had into changing someone's world. And someday, together, that will be enough to change the entire world. Thank you and have a great day. Please welcome Katie Byrne. Picture this. It's your birthday morning and you wake up bursting with excitement. You go downstairs only to realize that no one even acknowledged your special day. There are no decorations, presents, or a cake. You are devastated to see that you don't get a birthday. This exact scenario is true for thousands of kids in foster care every year. Hello, my name is Katie Bird, and for my capstone project, I work with an organization called Together We Rise to raise money for presents to give the children in foster care on their birthdays. Around the world, there are 443,000 kids in foster care, and 58,000 of them are in poverty. For these children in foster care, their birthday is just another ordinary day, and knowing that other kids get a party and presents can hurt. Children in foster care are children who do not have temporary homes. They live with non-permanent parents called foster parents. This gives them a place to live when their birth parents are unable to care for them. My first goal was to raise at least $200 for my organization. To achieve this, I ran a color run at the King Street Fields. This was an event that I created from scratch. I had to find a venue that was spacious enough where I could create a course, had a bathroom, and was not on roadways because then I would have had to pay for police detail. 
I had to purchase the color powder, white t-shirts, cones, and then secure as many volunteers as possible to help run the event. To incentivize people to sign up, I went door to door asking for donations to give gift cards to the first 30 signups and also the first three finishers of the race. The gift cards I ended up getting were for Dairy Queen and Urban Air. Another challenging part of this process was finding a date that my whole family would be able to go to. We actually ended up competing with a Patriots game, which made me nervous, but in the end there were still many people who participated. I was able to raise $560 in total, which I then sent to my organization. They in turn sent me material to make materials to make birthday boxes. With the money I raised, I was able to make 26. Each box contained toys, candles, balloons, and many other items necessary for a birthday. I got together with a few friends to make them, and together we wrote personalized cards to each kid, then assembled all the boxes. Once they were done, I brought them to a foster association to be distributed to foster homes. For my second goal, I wanted to raise awareness for children in foster care. I did this by giving a short presentation to grades 6, 7, and 8. I discussed things that children in foster care go through and the importance of recognizing them. I also handed out light blue ribbons to the kids. I did this because light blue is a national children in foster care color. My hope was that if the kids wore these around school, it could sprout conversations among the kids about why they were wearing them. For my final and personal goal, I wanted to become better at public speaking. I did this because when presenting, I tend to rush and move around a lot. To become more proficient at this, I made a form for people to fill out about my performance during different presentations that I gave. The form consisted of how good my pace was, if I had the speech memorized, and if I fidgeted around at all. I had my classmates or teachers fill it out with every presentation I gave. From this, the outcomes of my presentations increasingly became better throughout the project. During the beginning of my project, I faced a few obstacles that greatly impacted my goals. The first one I faced was that I was not eligible to volunteer at the foster home. Originally, for my second goal, I planned to volunteer at least eight hours. This did not work because I did not fit into the age requirements to volunteer. I got over this by changing my original goal to raise awareness about children in foster care. Another obstacle I had was that it took about three months to find a venue for my color run. I called many local schools that had the space for a color run, but they all denied my request. I procrastinated a lot over the summer, which began to become an issue because I thought I was going to have to change this goal. Later, my mom came up with the idea for me to ask places other than just schools. I tried many parts and fields, and luckily King Street Fields said yes. Overall, I am super proud of myself for everything that I did with this project. It was amazing to see how grateful Diane Busquet, the office coordinate, coordinator at the Foster Association was. She told me that the birthday boxes would be making many children and families happy. It was a great opportunity to be able to deliver the birthday boxes myself and see how important what I was doing was. I feel as though I have made a change within children in foster care and that I have also made a change within myself. When I was first choosing my topic, I didn't really have a reason for choosing children in foster care, but now I feel very fortunate to know that I will be benefiting underprivileged kids. First off, I want to thank everyone in my capstone group, along with my advisor, Mr. Afonso, for helping me throughout the capstone process. I want to thank Crystal from Together We Rise and my parents for guiding me through the obstacles I had. Finally, my friends, Giovanna Magaro, Sophie Jameson, Emma Ferreira, and Kira Magliari for doing so much for me with my color run and helping me assemble the birthday boxes. Thank you all so much for listening, and I hope you have a great day. faculty and students of BFCCBS. My name is Timothy Rita and I am here today to share with you my capstone project. A lot of people just use anxiety as, I get anxious about this test I have, or getting nervous about a social event. But have you ever washed your hands so frequently that your hands become chapped and red? Have you ever gone to the bathroom to wash your hands in a restaurant just before your food gets to the table because you touch the table? Wash a clean fork or knife before you cut your food to ensure that it's clean? Have you ever not eaten with your hands, but rather keep the food inside of a package or in a napkin? In the fall of 2014, at the beginning of third grade, this happened to me as my worries and anxiety took over my life after catching a downward spiral of frustration and agony. I chose this issue for capstone because I don't want people to suffer the way I do. I want people to know it's okay to talk about it, even though it's a sensitive subject. Anxiety shows itself in many forms. For some people, it comes out as screaming at someone or something, and for others, it can lead to withdrawal from friends or constant depression. There's a lot of stressors that make us all anxious, and today, my biggest anxiety is around public speaking. And even though it seems ironic, I'm actually very comfortable singing. In fact, I'd rather be singing this speech to you rather than reading it. <laughs> for my capstone project, I decided to focus on anxiety and stress reduction among elementary school students. 
For this project, I decided instead of choosing an organization, I can make a greater impact by helping people right here in school. For my first goal, I decided to make a Google Form survey to send to grades 3 through 5 with questions about apprehensions and inhibitions about their school life. Unfortunately, I didn't get responses from some classes, but I got enough data to learn about one class in grade 4 and about how much anxiety and stress they experienced. For example, I asked, do your friends know you're anxious? And do you get anxious when your parents ask you if you have homework? What I found out from the Google form is that some of the kids were really nervous on their first day of school and some were not. A lot won't share with their friends that they're anxious. My second goal was to go to the Franklin Farmer's Market and give out bracelets and mini stress balls. I was not allowed to sell things and make money, so I had a donation jar instead. And I ended up making $115. Originally, I was only hoping to make $50. I was pleased with how this turned out. While I was there, there were some people with interesting stories like me. One person I had talked to about the same book as me, Up and Down the Warrior Hill, which she said helped her when she was younger, too. My third goal was a personal goal. I wanted to work on being organized during cast time. Anyone that knows me knows that when I have papers to put away, I shove them anywhere and everywhere. So, to work on this, I met with Dr. Flieger about strengthening the organization of my notebooks. I still can't say that I'm completely organized, but I was at one point, and I'm still trying to make improvements. I also wanted to work on time management, because I always wait until the last second to do many things. For example, this speech that I'm reading to you right now. Just yesterday, ironically, as I was editing my organization and time management paragraphs, I put my Chromebook down for a moment, and when I turned back around, it had vanished. This was a major problem for me, as I no longer had a device to work on this speech. Luckily, Mr. Byrne and Mr. Alfonso were able to help. I realized in that moment that only using my planner sometimes and only putting things away in their proper place sometimes is still creating predicaments for me. On that note, my project had a couple of obstacles here and there, but I don't think I'd say any had, I had any major obstacles. My first obstacle was that I got a red light right away. Not only just one, I got two red lights because I did not have a clear overview for my step four. Another obstacle was that I waited until the last day to turn in step six, and I hadn't finalized an organization yet, and I ended up having to do the whole thing during advising. I think that I had a lot of success in my project. First, I went to the farmer's market to spread awareness about anxiety. I talked to about 40 people over three hours of time, and I donated a couple of up and down, work, up and down the worry hill books and stress balls to Mrs. McCoy. On a personal level, I learned that despite my anxiety, I can perform under pressure, and I will use that knowledge to help me be more confident in completing future projects. I don't think I got that much better at public speaking, but I still learned that I can speak in front of a large audience. Lastly, I learned that I should keep better track of my Chromebook the day before a big presentation. <laughs> I would like to thank Mr. Alfonso for being my advisor and helping me with whatever I need help with. My advisor group for all the feedback they gave me. My parents for constantly bugging me about my project. Dr. L for letting me do my Google Form survey with the kids and giving me my green light. Jake, Josh, and Lorelai for helping me with my speech. Mrs. Garbowski for helping me get a table at the farmer's market. Jason for helping me what you're seeing on the screen. Mr. Byrne for last minute help, and all of you for listening to this speech. Hope you have a great day, and I hope this wasn't that boring to sit here. Next, please welcome Jake Houlihan. By the way, I think Timmy got a little bit anxious during that. <laughs> All right. Hello. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jake Houlihan. And for those of you who do know me, my name is still Jake Houlihan. <laughs> Take a quick look around to the people next to you. Most of us have hot meals or we've had an opportunity to do so. But 815 million people are currently affected by hunger. That's almost one-seventh of the world's population. In the USA alone, 37 million people don't have enough food to eat every day. That's about one in every 10 people. For my capstone project, I work with the Zero Hunger Project. The goal of the Zero Hunger Project is to end the world hunger crisis by the year 2030. I had chosen to work with the Zero Hunger Project because I believe everyone should be able to have a hot meal one or two times a day, and some people do not have that privilege or ability. To help the Zero Hunger Project in their endeavor, I took the initiative to help hunger in our community. For my first goal, I had decided to host a food drive. It seems unoriginal, but I felt it felt my project the best. And as Mr. Afonso had so politely commented on my speech, who said you had to reinvent the wheel? In order to proceed with my plan, I filled out a yellow sheet. 
But, as I was finalizing my plan, the event was moved due to a kind of time conflict, which meant I had to reapply by filling another, another yellow sheet and submitting it to Dr. Allen. This was not expected, but when push comes to shove, I had ended up moving the food drive out to mid-June. Finally, in what felt like and probably was months, the day had come and I placed a collection bin in Dr. L's office. I collected the bin roughly a week later and collected about 50 pounds of non-perishable food. One issue I had while putting this together was poor advertising. I had created very few flyers and had no morning announcement to give to the announcements. Eventually, I printed enough flyers to deliver around for all the classrooms for people to see. My second goal was to create flyers to inform people about hunger and how to help deal with it. I decided to put the information on the back of my family's Christmas card so that our friends and family could learn the information. On the card, I had written about how there are many hungry people in the world and how it is important to help by volunteering or donating food to these people. Coincidentally, my aunt collects food every year for the food pantry. I wish I could say I motivated her to do this, but I did not. The goal I ended up completing was very different from my original plan. Originally, I had planned to make a rather small speech about malnutrition, how to help hungry people in food pantries and shelters, and put this into the morning announcements. But here we are, no announcement, yet a completed goal. My third goal, also known as my personal goal, was to become more organized. Did this goal work? Not as well as it should have. You see, this whole organization idea is one I'm not at all used to, and this was a pretty big learning curve for me. I did attempt to organize my life, but this was essentially just creating a chart of what I needed to do, when and where it's going to take place. So far, this plan isn't really working, and the best and most progress I've made is to make this for my rather busy Boy Scout schedule and big ambitions I have. I did attempt to make a chart with the times I needed to do things and when I needed to go places, but not even three days later, this chart was unused and outdated. I have been working with my parents to create a new system of time management to fit in all my Boy Scout activities and my schoolwork. And so far, it's going pretty well. Some obstacles I had run into were my food drive kept changing dates. This wasn't a huge obstacle, it was more just a little annoying. My, another obstacle I'd face was my less than stellar advertising. Summer vacation, three weeks of Boy Scouts doesn't work well with Capstone. I had also faced some problems with my third concussion in August, which limited what I could and could not do leading up to the new school year. And probably the biggest issue of all, my time management abilities. Overall, my Capstone had mediocre success, but I believed I learned some very valuable things from my mistakes. This is something I hadn't realized until I began to reflect on what I did and what was good and what hurt my project. Some things I have learned will be necessary life skills in the real world, and more importantly, my current ambition to form, fund, advertise, and execute a Boy Scout Eagle project, an experience that will be very similar to Capstone projects. I had also learned many other valuable skills, such as time management, how to set and track goals properly, and how to inform and motivate people to contribute to a cause. Now, it's time for a quick thank you portion. I'd like to thank my parents for trying and probably pushing me through this project with a few more than two arguments. I would like to thank Mr. Afonso for, as he stated, dealing with my apparently growing insanities. Um, also, my contacts over at Zero Hunger for allowing me to collaborate with them. And lastly, the people in my advising group over here. Thank you, and have a nice day. Next, please welcome Ashley Blumen. HIV slash AIDS combined. Just in the Honduras alone, 630,000 people lack access to drinkable water, a basic necessity, and 1 million lack access to basic sanitation, but I can help reduce the numbers of people who have to suffer through this. Fellow students, faculty, and guests, my name is Ashley Wallman, and I chose to provide clean water to an underserved community called Trojes for my capsule project. The municipality of Trojes is located in the southeast of Honduras. In this region, 70% of households do not have access to safe drinking water. Instead, they use water directly from the river, which is highly contaminated. Over half the population in Trojes does not have a toilet or latrine, which is why most of the water sources available to them are contaminated with human waste. When looking for an organization to work with, 
I made sure that they would actually keep these promises of clean water long term and not just for a limited time. This is why I chose to work with Pure Water for the World, or how they say it in the Honduras, Agua Puro para el Mundo. In partnership with UNICEF, in 2009, they launched a water and sanitation project in the Trojas region, which was identified as high need and underserved. Not, they not only provide water filters for families, but they also provide a sanitation education system called WASH, which stands for Water, Sanitation, and Hygiene. So far, they were able to help 120,000 people in the Honduras and El Salvador have access to safe drinking water. My parents always told me stories from their youth and how they had to get up in the morning and walk miles and hours to and from the river to collect water and buckets to use throughout the day. They acted like it was a normal everyday thing that everyone did, which upset me since they had to struggle so much just to get water. Now I ask you, what do you do to get water? Walk to the sink and turn on the tap water and that's it. Imagine yourself doing what they did every morning before school just to get water. I've always felt guilty that I had it so easy and cannot believe such a simple necessity is still not available for so many people even today. So I, once I realized I had the opportunity to help people that suffer through this every day, I chose this issue as my topic. To make sure I had my priorities set, I chose three goals that I wanted to complete throughout my capsule. <coughs> for my first goal, I decided to raise funds to support my organization and their mission. At first, I wanted to volunteer somehow and help them directly. I realized that was close to impossible for me, since their office is located in Tegucigalpa, Honduras, and that is approximately 3,732.2 miles away from where I live. <laughs> so I had to scrap that idea since I can't afford a plane to go there, and I don't want to spend 64 hours of my life in a car to get there. Instead, I decided to make and sell food to raise funds. During the summer, I sold homemade empanadas in an Ecuadorian dessert called Espumilla at the Fino Field Park in Milford on weekends. I wanted to raise at least $50 by doing this, I was able to make and sell about 15 bags of my delicious product each day, and as a result, I raised $222, which surpassed my original goal by $170. For my original goal, uh, for my second goal, I decided to inform my community about this crisis. I didn't make flyers to passively hand out. Instead, I talked to my customers. I, had a, I held a conversation with them and tried to make them relate to the people who go through this hardship today. My community at home is largely made up of Hispanics, but the people I was, I was talking to were Ecuadorians. Just like my parents, most if not all of them went through the same issue back then as many still do today in developing countries like the Honduras. They understood that what these people were going through and donated money, which they had to since I'm selling this food at a price and they had no choice. For my last goal, I want to be more organized and get my life back together, for the most part. I'm a messy person and I really need to improve my organizational skills so I won't lose papers and to keep track of assignments. To accomplish the goal, I bought an agenda. I write down any assignments or events that occur in or out of school, but this system didn't really work well for me. Obstacles I faced during this project were leaving things until the last minute like most people do. To overcome this obstacle, I use a trick. I would tell myself that I would do that thing for as little time as possible, like studying for 30 seconds. As soon as I started, I would realize that it wasn't so bad and kept doing it. Another thing that didn't go so well was my agenda system. I didn't really look at it as often as I should, so instead, I went home and typed my homework on a Google Doc titled Stuff I Have to Do or Else I'm Going to Fail School and Be a Huge Disappointment to My Parents. <laughs> and it became a routine ever since. Anyways, enough about that. To end off this presentation, I want to thank the following people for supporting me throughout my capture class. My mother for making the food with me and being there when I really needed her. My advising group for supporting me. Mr. Afonso, my advisor, for helping me with every step throughout my project. Tony for helping me with literally everything and for making me laugh every advising block. Maria Inestrosa, the Central American Director of Pure Water for the World, Oscar Andino, the Project Coordinator in Drojes, and all the staff who worked so hard to deliver water filters to families, despite the difficult terrain. Last but not least, I want to thank you for sitting here for many minutes and listening to my speech. Thank you, and have a high-quality rest of your day. Please welcome Sid Aurora. students, parents, faculty, and staff of BFCCPS. I'm here today to talk about an unforgettable journey, also known as my capstone project. I wanted to help with a problem that I've experienced in order to fully understand how to aid. Almost all my life, I was diagnosed with life-threatening allergies to many things, like dairy, peanuts, and more. I knew I would be able to abundantly help in this dilemma. 
Research suggests that 10% of the world has life-threatening allergies. Allergies can reach a pinnacle of severity that can possibly lead to death. I knew I had to help. After some time passed, I have formally put out my idea. I started to scout the internet for an organization and eventually found a nonprofit organization called FAIR. FAIR stands for Food, Allergy, Research, and Education. FAIR helps kids and adults that have allergies and does whatever possible to educate and support people with allergies. I decided that I would reach out to one of FAIR's minor organizations and see what I could do to bolster their mission. With the info that they gave me, I have made three goals. Two goals to help support the organization and one personal goal that I would develop over the course of my project. I will also go through some obstacles and accomplishments during my presentation. My first goal was to build a website with multiple articles and information that include basic facts about allergies, like minor and severe symptoms, what is and how to prevent allergic reactions, how do you know if you have an allergy, etc. I would then advertise the website to the school on Ben's bus. This allowed me to raise awareness about allergies and their dangers. For my second goal, I went door to door around my neighborhood and sold teal colored pumpkins for Halloween. I would sell teal pumpkins because teal is the color for allergy awareness according to FAIR. The purpose of this act is to raise some profit to donate to the FAIR organization. In total, I have raised about $120. The money will help the organization get more support and flexibility on what they can do to help people. For my third and personal goal, I chose to work on managing my time. Before this project started, I have noticed myself not getting time to do things other than school assignments most of the time. While I also see that everyone else has time to do things like focus on their passion and hobbies or developing new ideas. The reason was that I was spending too much time on homework and waiting until the last minute to finish things up. I was consistently up late doing work, writing late emails to teachers, and eventually being detrimental to my own health. I was being lazy, I knew this was wrong, and I was wasting time. I started making bi-weekly schedules and to-do lists every day to keep track when I'm getting done each day. I'm currently still working on it, but I've made much progress. I keep striving every day to do better than the day before. Of course, I couldn't do this without some obstacles. I had encountered many hardships during my project. For example, I wanted to actually host a teal pumpkin paint night for younger students during the month of October instead of selling pumpkins door to door. The students would be able to come to school on an evening and paint teal pumpkins whatever they please for $4 each pumpkin. Unfortunately, I was not able to execute the event because there were issues with hosting events at the school due to the hard transition to the new building. Another obstacle was that I could not publish my website on time because at first the website seemed like a testimonial or an advertisement to go help the organization, while the purpose was to give basic information. Luckily, with the help of Dr. Levering, I was able to rewrite some of the articles and publish my website and achieve my goal. I felt like I accomplished many things during this project, physically and mentally. My passion moved me forward. I have raised money and awareness, as well as a new personal skill for myself, and a message for all seventh graders starting their capstone projects. As long as you have a strong passion for your cause, you will be able to work through your project with enjoyment and no stress. I would like to say thank you to some people. I give my gratitudes to my advisors, Mr. Alfonso and Mrs. Magaro, for the guidance to the right path, my advisees for giving me all the support I needed, the FAIR organization for, gu for guidance and providing information, Dr. Levering for helping me with my website, my parents and my sister Sai for helping and supporting me to work hard, and finally, you for listening and being a good audience. Thank you and have a great day. faculty of PFCCPS. My name is Neil Bogner, and for my capstone project, I chose to work with the Friends of the Milford Bike Trail. I chose this project because I have been using the Milford Bike Trail for all of my life, and since I was really little, have great experiences there, and some not so great. From the trailer to my own bike, the trail kept getting dirtier over the years I've been going. I love bike riding and have seen the entire trail. The one thing that stood out to me the most was how bad the butterfly garden had been getting over the years of going past it. 
In 2012, my brother decided for his capstone project to put a wheelchair stop at an overlook on the lake. This helped me and inspired him to do my project on the bike trail. For my project, I decided to beautify the Milford bike trail. My first goal was to hold a pin knot tournament at school and raise $50. This was hard because I had to keep moving the date back because of field day and other various school conflicts. I held my pin knot tournament the week before the end of school and did not get the attendance I was looking for. Coincidentally, we had a field trip the same day of the tournament, so not many other classmates could come. I raised $90, which was well over my goal of $50, even though I did not get the attendance I was looking for. But many of my friends and some alumni did join us in playing pin down. I think this goal was a success because everybody had fun and the money would go to help me with my capstone. My second goal was to go out onto the bike trail and put the edging stones around the butterfly garden. I could not just go onto the trail and do that, so I had to go to a friend's of the Milford bike trail meeting to get permission. The meetings only happen once a month on the first Tuesday of every month. And when I went to the meeting, at first I thought I would use the money I buy, I, Sorry, I misspoke. I raised to me to buy the stones and dirt, but I did not end up needing it because one of the members of my organization had edging stones that he was not going to use. I ended up buying only six dollars worth of dirt and donating the rest of my money to my organization. With the help of my parents, I put in the edging stones and successfully completed this goal. My third goal was to become more organized in school. I decided to do this goal because it has been a problem for a very long time. If you looked at me doing my monthly binder cleaning last year, you would have seen a stack of papers about an inch thick that I took out of my binder. Again, it was a giant problem. When I found out we were going to have lockers this year, I thought to myself, I will never let my locker get cluttered, but my clean locker lasted for two days. <laughs> I really struggled with being organized because I am not the type of person that is organized and I need reminders sometimes. But I cleaned my locker after two weeks and I try to clean it up at the end of each week if I need to. Before winter vacation, I cleaned it out, and it is not cluttered yet, which is a record for me. And as for my binder, I clean it out every week if I need to. Of course, I couldn't complete capstone without some obstacles. So I over some obstacles I overcame were the forever changing dates of the pin down tournament. I could not find a date that worked for me or the school until the second to last week of school. Yet another obstacle was that the eighth graders graduated before my tournament was held, but I overcame that because they came to visit the school and they saw I had a pin on tournament and they decided to join. Another obstacle was finding a meeting that I could go to. There's only one meeting on the first Tuesday of every month and I was sick so I could not go to a meeting in May. I ended up going on the one in June which delayed the start time of putting in the edging stones around the butterfly garden. The final obstacle was that I am not a neat person and I thought I was incapable of being neat. And at the end of each week I checked to see how many papers I had used in my binder. I either clipped them into my binder or I recycled them because I did not need them. I overcame all of these obstacles and completed my capstone project without any other major bumps. I successfully completed my capstone project in my sometimes busy schedule and found time to hold my pin up tournament and time to put the edging stones around the butterfly garden. But of course, I could not complete this project without the help of many people. First, I would like to thank my parents for helping me putting the edging stones and for being with me every step of the way, whether they liked it or not. I would like to thank my advisor, Mr. Afonso, Ms. Mogaro, and all of my advisees for supporting me during the capstone projects, and the students and alumni who attended my pin tournament. And I would like to thank all of the members of the Milford Bike Trail for letting me do this project. And last but not least, all of you for listening to my capstone speech. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you, everybody. Can we give one round of applause to Mr. Um, <laughs> Next up, I would like to introduce Mrs. Navarro and her advising group. Thank you, Mrs. Alvesta. That was so Gosh. Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jennifer Mogaro, and I am an inclusion teacher for grades three and six, along with being blessed to be a grade eight advisor to these amazing kids right here. Before I begin introducing my advising group, I'd like to take a quick moment to acknowledge Mr. Alfonso. I do not believe that I could have ever made it this far if not for a steadfast commitment to both groups of students during this process. 
I truly appreciate everything that you did. Excuse me, I did not realize it took 10 minutes to come from grade three to grade seven almost every single Thursday. So thank you very much. Now on with the show. I would like you to introduce our first speaker, Lily Mackey, who made us all realize that, Ms. Herlicek, you love this one, it's okay to not be okay. Good morning, everyone. For those of you who don't already know me, my name is Lily Mackey. I'm, an eighth I'm a member of the eighth grade class here at BFCCPS, and I chose to focus on suicide prevention and mental health awareness for my capstone project. I was inspired to focus on this topic for my project because a few years ago, a close relative of mine passed away due to depression as a teen. For my family, this was an extremely devastating time, and since then has allowed me to understand how important preventing suicide and focusing on mental health really is. As middle schoolers, we are constantly being told that drugs are bad, smoking is bad, getting into the van with a stranger who has candy is bad, but people rarely shed light on mental health, specifically depression. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for teens. It is a very important topic that is often ignored out of fear or awkwardness, and I wanted to make sure others in my community were educated about it. I worked with the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention to raise, for, to raise awareness to this cause. My first goal was to have a speaker from the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention, or the AFSP, come and give a presentation to the 7th and 8th grade. I emailed the AFSP and coordinated with Michelle Lee, an event coordinator, and Dr. Levering, a date that would work for the school and presenter. Anne Marie, a trained specialist, came to BFCCPS on November 7th and gave the more than sad presentation that focused on depression and actions to take if effective. Later that evening, she also presented a parent pillar night to educate parents on the subject at school. After the presentation, I personally felt more informed and hope the same could be said for my peers. My second goal was to raise money for the Samaritans organization by creating and captaining a walk team for the Samaritans 5K Walk for Suicide Prevention. The Samaritans provide educational opportunities for people to learn about suicide and mental health. My mom helped me spread the word about the team via Facebook post so many people would have the opportunity to sign up. My goal was to raise $250 towards the Samaritans. I was pleasantly surprised to find out that mid-project, one of my mother's former co-workers, Mr. DeCaro, was willing to let me host a fundraiser at his cycle bar in Milford, a spinning facility. From this cycle bar fundraiser, we were able to raise a total of $420 towards the Samaritans 5K sum. In all, my team of family and friends and I raised a total of $2,085 towards the Samaritans through pledges and donations, well over my original goal of $250. My third and final goal was to stay organized through the capstone process with a planner agenda. I was able to write down all of my homework and capstone assignments into a checklist each day. This made keeping track of my assignments easy. I also had the help of the 8th grade homework site, but found my checklist to be the most helpful and effective thing for me. Staying organized immensely reduced stress and procrastination throughout my project, something I might have struggled with otherwise. During my project, I faced two obstacles. My first obstacle was when I received a yellow light at panel. I received a yellow light because my third goal was semi-undecided and unclear. After discussion with my parents, Dr. Levering, and advisors, I was able to form a new third goal that would suit my project well. I got a green light to continue on with the project. My second obstacle was finding a date that worked for the guest speaker from the AFSP to come and give the more than sad presentation. I originally wanted the presentation to happen before the summer, but the move to the new school building made that goal unrealistic. I was, it was difficult to figure out a time that worked for the school and presenter. Finally, a date was set thanks to Dr. Levering for staying communicating with me and Michelle Lee. I was lucky to have a few obstacles with my capstone project that was simple to overcome over time. Before I conclude my presentation, there are some people I would like to thank. I'd first like to thank my mom and dad for helping me through the whole project by driving me places, helping me brainstorm ideas, and supporting me and my project by attending events. I'd like to thank the DeCaros for letting me host a fundraiser at their cycle bar, Michelle Lee and Anne Marie from the AFSP for scheduling and presenting the more than sad presentation to the seventh and eighth grade and pillar, parent pillar night. My advisors, Mrs. Magaro and Mr. Afonso and my advising group for giving me advice and constructive criticism whenever I needed it. Overall, I am very proud of how my capstone project turned out. I feel I was able to make a difference in my community and impact the way some people think about mental health. I'm extremely grateful that BFCCPS provides my peers and I with this opportunity 
because I know that everyone can make a difference no matter who or how old they are. I believe that no matter what state of mind someone is in, there is always a way into the light. Thank you so much for listening to my capstone presentation, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Our next speaker needs absolutely no introduction. <laughs>
Thank you to anybody who visited my stand at the farmer's market. And finally, all of you who listened to the adventurous, suspenseful, and life-changing story of my capstone project. The end. <laughs> Please welcome Haley Morin, who will fix the world one sheet of paper at a time. <laughs> at the start of seventh grade, we met this giant barricade. It consumed our every thought, leaving us all very distraught. Now, at last, we're almost done, yet still our work has just begun. Hello. My name is Haley Morn, and I did my capstone project about recycling. I wanted to focus on this because I know that it is a huge problem for the marine life there. If people recycle, less trash could get into the wonderful bodies of water that we so depend on. Lots of people recycle at home, like my family, but neither of the small businesses where my parents work do any recycling, so I figured that the same was true for many other small businesses. After communicating with multiple places, I decided to work with Engineering Design Services in Rhode Island, my dad's work, who, after I told him the benefits of recycling, got a recycling bin from Republic Services. I was originally going to work with a small business in Bellingham, but that posed some unexpected challenges. So, in the end, I was unable to collaborate with them. My first goal was to get a small business to recycle. Before I went to talk to the businesses, I created a detailed note sheet so that I could make sure I collected all the information that I needed to be successful for when I talked to the owners. I walked around downtown Franklin trying to find a place to work with. After a fair amount of investigating, I found out that the landlords already provided recycling services for their tenants. Good for the environment, bad for me. <laughs> I then decided to try and get in touch with the company where my mom works in Bellingham instead. First, I called the manager, and he told me that I should speak with the landlord. When I called the landlord, he told me that he would be interested in recycling if he could get a little more information about it. I decided to speak with the Bellingham Department of Public Works to see if they offered recycling to small businesses. They told me that they did not, so I reached out to some recycling companies. Not many of them took me seriously, or they did not pick up the phone, so I was only able to speak with waste management. They gave me useful information, which I relayed to the landlord. Unfortunately, I ran into an obstacle when this landlord was no longer keeping in touch with me. I fixed this by working with Engineering Design Services instead. I called Mr. Mayer, the manager, and he immediately reached out to his trash service and had a recycling bin within a week. My second goal was to raise awareness about how to recycle properly. I wanted to talk to grades 5 through 8 about my cause, host an event at the new school for grades kindergarten through 4, and I also wanted to pass out flyers in my neighborhood. I was able to educate grades 5 through 8 students about recycling, but I came to realize that hosting an event for grades kindergarten through 4 in the new school was going to be way too much for me to handle. Instead, I reserved a booth at the Franklin Farmer's Market in June, where I had an educational trifold, a recycling craft, and handouts. I also handed out flyers in my neighborhood during the fall. My third and personal goal was to reduce my stress about long-term projects. I decided to do this by keeping a journal of when I got stressed and using strategies to keep my mind off my stress, like playing outside, using a fidget, or reading. In my journal, I wrote down what I was stressed about, why I was stressed, how much time I had left to do the assignment, a backup plan, and the due date of my assignment. I feel as if this strategy worked because I noticed my amount of journal entries decreasing as the project progressed. I still got stressed, but it took me less time to calm down than it did at the start of the project. Throughout my project, I faced a few obstacles that made me feel like an umbrella swept up by the wind. First, when the landlord didn't keep in touch with me, I finally had to find another business to work with. Also, I was going to host an event at the new school for the younger grades, the logistics were going to be a nightmare. I opted to set up an educational booth at the farmer's market instead, so families could learn about recycling in a fun way. There are so many people that helped these obstacles be less of a hindrance to me, and I couldn't have completed this project without them. Thank you very much to my family and friends for their never-ending support, my advisor, Mrs. Magaro, Mr. Afonso, my advising group, specifically my friend Katrina Elias, Mrs. Garboski, 
Everyone who listened to my little speech at the farmer's market and at school. Everyone who came to my farmer's market stand. And finally, Mr. Mayer from Engineering Design Services. Capstone pushed us to our limits, and we worked hard for every minute. It may not exactly have been fun, but now I'm proud of all that I've done. Please welcome Evan Tarantola, who will let us know that it's cool to be benched. <laughs> since fourth grade and over the years I've heard many inspiring speeches and I wanted to challenge myself to find a project that would be beneficial to many people. I've played baseball since I was very young and I still love playing it. To me it has always been and still is a huge part of who I am. To me it is more than sport, it is a passion that I have. That is why I wanted to help the Franklin Recreation Department to improve the baseball fields in Franklin. I wanted to give back to my community by helping out with the fields because the Franklin Baseball has helped me out for nine years by providing me with an awesome baseball player. I developed three goals that I wanted to achieve for my capstone project. For my first goal, I wanted to raise money for materials to build benches for the little kids. I wanted to build them because they did not have any benches to sit on or put their equipment on. To accomplish my goal, I corresponded with Ryan Jetty, who is the director of the recreation department. I asked what I can do for the baseball fields, and he suggested I could construct benches for the peewee fields. I completed this task with the help from Zach, Philip, Nick, my dad, and Mr. Weedman accompanied it. To raise money for the benches, I had an in-school fundraiser, which was a wiffle ball tournament, and raised $36. The second way I raised money was by having an online fundraiser, which raised $720. All the leftover money I donated to the Jimmy Fund, which helps children with cancer. I chose the Jimmy Fund because the Red Sox are a huge supporter of them. My second goal was to volunteer for the Challenger Week. This program helps the Challenge kids in Franklin, ranging from 6 to 18 years old, play the game of baseball. It is truly an incredible experience when you are helping them out to have a standard game of baseball and how excited they are when they hit the ball far. I volunteered for two games with a few of my friends from baseball. Both of the games were one hour long, and I volunteered for these games in early April. For my third goal and final goal, I want to become more comfortable speaking to adults and large groups of people. To accomplish this, every time I was talking to an adult, I treated them with respect. I looked them in the eye and acknowledged what they were saying. Now, I'm not saying I didn't do that before, it's just I'm doing it more often. When I was working with Mr. Weeman to build the benches, I gave him my full attention and looked him in the eye when speaking to him. This is something I tried to do when speaking to any adult. This skill definitely helped to complete my projects. Although Capstone was a great experience, there were a few obstacles that I faced and overcame. The first obstacle was when we were building the benches, there was a group of rocks in the hole that we were digging in. We had to take out all the tiny rocks and dig around the larger ones. This was a minor obstacle, but it still held us up from building the benches. Another obstacle was that we did not have enough of certain materials. We needed to get more wood, and the screws that we got were the wrong kind. We resolved this by driving back to Home Depot and getting the new supplies. Another small problem was that when we were building the benches, I broke the drill bit. <laughs> yeah, we resolved this by driving back to Home Depot and getting new. <laughs> Overall, I think my project was a success. I raised $756 to buy the materials for the benches and to donate to the Jimmy Fund. I volunteered for the Challenger League. And finally, I improved my public speaking and communicating with adults. I learned that giving feels good. These skills I will always utilize in my life. Along the successful journey, there are several people who I'd like to thank. First, I'd like to thank my advisors, Mrs. McNagaro and Mr. Fonzo, for helping me out with everything in Capstone. I'd like to thank my advisor group for being there when I need them and for being awesome. I'd also like to thank my parents for driving me everywhere and for putting up with me. I'd like to thank Mr. Jetty for giving me a job to do. Also, I want to give a special thanks to Mr. Weedman for not only building adventures with me, but for volunteering his time. This allowed me to give more money to the Jimmy Fund. 
I'd like to thank Zach, Nick, and Philip for also helping me with building the benches. I'd like to thank the Franklin DPW for supplying us with water for the cement and for digging the holes for the benches. And last but not least, I would like to thank everyone who donated to my capstone and who participated in our football club. I want to conclude my speech with a famous quote. Yogi Berra, a former catcher for the Yankees, once said, Baseball is 90% mental and the other half is physical. Thank you all for listening and have a spectacular day. Just trying to get the last name straight. So please welcome Katrina Elias. Have you ever been in a situation where you were just stuck in a hospital for a short period of time and you absolutely despised it? I know I have, and it wasn't just for a short period of time, it was for a couple of years. I was born with three holes in my heart. Yes, I know, shocking. I spent four years battling through 12 surgeries. It was one of the toughest obstacles that I had to endure. It took some time, but finally the doctors were able to find a solution. Since fighting all these issues, the doctors wanted to reward me with a gift, which made me feel much better. Hello everyone, my name is Katrina Elias, and for my capstone project, I decided to work with the Boston Children's Hospital and give the patients, patients their gifts. I wanted to let these patients feel the same way I did when I got mine. My first goal was a fundraiser. I was planning on having a dance for the K-4 kids to raise awareness and to teach them to be nice to everyone. Unfortunately, that didn't work out because I wanted to do it in a new school towards the beginning of the school year. So I decided to do it on a church festival instead on September 14th. To advertise, I said, want to donate money to the Boston Children's Hospital? That obviously didn't work because over the course of two hours, I only raised nine dollars, while my goal was a hundred. I wanted people to want to donate, so I changed it to make a stranger in need smile by donating one dollar. I explained to them about my organization and what I'm doing. By the end of the day, I raised a total of two hundred and eighteen dollars. I was extremely delighted. I exceeded my goal by one hundred and eighteen dollars. My second goal was to volunteer at the hospital. Little did I know, I had to be 16 years or older to do so. I tried to think of any other way I can volunteer that has to do with helping kids. I had my parents help me think of a better idea, and they came up with the library. I know, it has nothing to do with the hospital, but my goal was to make kids I didn't know happy, and the library has that. I called them, signed some papers, and was ready to go. That same weekend, I volunteered on September 26th. I instructed kids and their parents on whatever they needed help with, plus informing them about my organization and to encourage them to be kind to others. All the smiles on the children's faces made me extremely joyful. For my third and personal goal, I decided to work harder on feeling proud in what I do. What I mean by that is when I do something, I always stress about it, so it makes me feel like I could have done it better. I decided to work on that by making my goals achievable. In the beginning of the project, I wasn't that happy with what I was doing, mainly because it was all easy steps. Once we started to do our actual project, I felt more successful. By now, I feel like I've changed. What helped me get through this is all the people that were there to support me and watch me achieve my goal. Now, a project can't be that easy without some obstacles. In total, I had three major ones. First obstacle, I was too young to volunteer at the hospital. The only volunteering that I could do that had the same results was the library. My second obstacle was the K-4 dance at school. I wanted to do the fundraiser at the new school, but that was too much time to wait for. I wanted to do my goal the same time that it would get approved. I transferred the fundraiser to my church because there was no age restriction there. My third and final obstacle was that I was planning on doing a lot of my project in the summer, but I was planning Excuse me, but I was busy due to a family emergency, so I ended up, ended up pushing everything to the beginning of the school year. My solution was to do everything I planned to do, but faster, so I could fit it in three months. At the end, I feel like I've accomplished something I never thought of me doing. I started off as a girl who went to the hospital, now I'm someone who made a difference to the hospital. In the beginning, I didn't even know I could do something that big at my age. 
I'm very thankful to have this opportunity. I made a difference to the hospital and the patients there. In total, I passed out 57 gifts. Now they know that people care for them. I keep saying how proud I am of my project, but I really couldn't have done it without my mom, dad, and brother's support for do on everything I did. Mrs. McGarr for being the best advisor and always making me laugh. My best friend Haley Warren for giving me constructive criticism. My doctor David Brown and Maureen Abramson for helping me at the hospital. And thank you to my entire advising group and Mr. Afonso for editing everything I did. Thank you for being patient and listening to my speech. And don't forget, make one person smile every day and you will make a difference. Did I mention, is Mr. Alfonso awesome? Wow. <laughs> all right, so my next speaker, Akeli Collins, will school all of us online.
First of all, the hard to measure in terms of progress, but I, by a source, say that I improved in my time management skills and completing tasks earlier than the night before. Using the available resources, I tried to budget my time and improve my organization and task skills. Change takes time, though, and that's okay. Of course, none of this would have been possible without specific people who along for the ride. I'd first like to thank my advisor, Mrs. McGarrow, along with the rest of my advising group, for helping me through planning this out and other capstone-related issues. I should also thank Mr. Alfonso and his group for helping out, since they were my most valuable resource in planning and providing feedback and solutions to roadblocks that appeared. The biggest help of all came from my mom, for supporting this hectic process and going along with my shenanigans. <laughs> I could cite my dogs for emotional support, but I bribed them with treats, so I'm not sure if that counts. <laughs> all jokes aside, I have to thank you all for listening to this presentation. Good luck, there's only a few of these left, and I bid you farewell. <laughs> Our next presenter is Brooke Bernicki, who will bring a voice to all young women. Every year in the United States, over 12 million people are abused by their significant other. I believe that no one should be harmed in any way, shape, or form by the person that they love. Hello, my name is Brooke Warnke, and for my capstone project, I decided to help the victims of domestic violence by partnering with SOPS, Voices Against Violence. Voices Against Violence is an organization that helps individuals recover from being in an abusive relationship and or family. My first goal to help this cause was to volunteer for 10 hours, but because you can only volunteer at a domestic violence shelter if you are 18 years or older, I raised awareness in the Franklin community instead. I achieved this by signing up for a tent at the Franklin Farmer's Market where I informed teenagers and adults about domestic violence, its prevalence in the world, and how they could help. I also accomplished this goal by contributing to the Passion Walk that Voices Against Violence holds once every year. I created a team with my mom, her friend, my sister and I, and help spread awareness with everyone else who went to the event. My second goal was to collect donations that the shelter needed and that they could use. The three objects I was approved to be able to donate for the shelter was money for the shelter, Charlie cards so that the shelter members could have a way to safely get to court, and no so pillows so that each resident had something that was personal but also useful. My goal my goal was to make 20 no so pillows and raise $200. The first thing I set out to do was to see if I could receive any donations from Joanne's Fabrics. But when they could only give me a small gift card, I decided to take my mom's suggestion of asking on Facebook to see who could donate. Eight people responded, and because of their donations, I was able to make the pillows. I also held a last minute pillow making event in November with my friends, and because of them, I was able to meet my goal. To accomplish my goal of raising enough money, I decided that I wanted to hold a raffle when we moved to the new school. I decided that for my raffle, I would make the prize a giant teddy bear and that all grades could participate. My yellow sheet was approved, and luckily, my raffle became very popular. Many people bought tickets. I also achieved this goal by asking for donations at the Franklin Farmers Market. My third goal was to manage my time better. Because ever since I was in kindergarten, I have been turning assignments and homework in late. So to lessen the time I took on homework, I tried, excuse me, I tried four different me methods that were recommended to me. The first strategy that I tried was trying to track, was using timers to track how long I was taking on my homework. But this did not work because it just made me more stressed out. Next, I tried it, writing down how much time my homework took on an agenda, but because of my lack of motivation, I did not complete this. Shortly after these, trying these two methods, I was diagnosed with ADHD, which is how I s started the third method of trying different prescribed medicines that could help me focus. Unfortunately, to keep it short, I didn't find a medicine that worked for me until October, so medicine was not something I could rely on. 
The fourth and final method that I tried was listening to different genres of music. I visited one called lo-fi hip-hop and, and tried to work while listening to it, and it proved the most effective because it helped me stay focused for long periods of time. During Capstone, everybody faces obstacles. Unfortunately, I experienced more than my share. The first obstacle I faced was not being able to meet with Isabel Vera, the manager of Voices Against Violence, to talk about what I could do to help the organization until after the Capstone panel was over. This caused me to get a yellow light. To fix this, I just simply met with Isabel when it was time, gave the information that was given to me to my advisor, and then received a green light. My second obstacle was, as you know, I was diagnosed with ADHD, making it more making it more difficult for me to manage how much time I spent on things because I can't control or, or, um, how much I focus. The final obstacle was that I that final obstacle that I had to overcome was that I messed up the measurements on many of the pillows. Thankfully, I only did that to the smaller pieces of, of fabric, but it still makes me feel a bit disappointed that I had to put some of them to waste. In, in my capstone pro project, I also had many accomplishments. First, I had the chance to inform our community about domestic violence. Second, for my goal of making 20 pillows, I made around 35 to 40 pillows instead. Third, I raised over $530 in the teddy bear raffle, plus the $85 I raised at the farmer's market, totaling up to over $600 of fundraise money that I got to donate, which I'm very proud of. And finally, I found a way using music to help me stay more focused on assignments for a long time. There are a lot of people I need to thank for this capstone project because I wouldn't have been able to do it without them. Thank you to Isabel Rivera for allowing me to work with Smock, approving my ideas, and for all your suggestions. Thank you for to Dr. Lovering for approving my raffle. Thank you to Mrs. Garbowski for allowing me to hold a stand at the farmer's market. Thank you to my awesome capstone advisors, Mrs. Navarro and Mr. Alfonso, for helping 20 loud teenagers complete a community service project. <laughs> My advising group for inspiring me and helping me through tough situations. My dad and my sister, everyone that contributed to my raffle when came to my tent at the farmer's market. My friends Mateo, Akalia, Kira, Nawila, and Alice for coming to my last minute pillow making event. And my mom who helped me through every step of the capstone process. And to you for being so patient and listening to my capstone project. to Brooke or Nikki. I am so sorry. I don't know how Nikki came out. Warnicky, I am so sorry. I'm just, I mispronounced her name originally. It's Warnicky. Sorry. Sorry for that. You know, old brain, young person. Just doesn't so. Last but not least, drum roll please. Josh, Alice, who will pitch in and save the environment. Good morning, parents, students, and faculty of BACCPS. My name is Joshua Alice, and for my capstone project, I chose to work with the Southern New England Trunkline Trail, Franklin Trailhead, or simply known as the Bellingham, the Franklin and Bellingham Rail Trail. My goals were to complete, to clean up the rail trail, attend the rail trail race, and to attend the board meetings at the YMCA. The, the reason why I chose this organization is that I really like the outdoors. Not only do I care about the environment, I also want to make sure that the environment is clean and preserved. I noticed that the rail trail was very dirty. There, there was trash everywhere. There were plenty of styrofoam cups, napkins, oil cans that I didn't expect to see on the trail. And what to see what seemed to be parts to a computer. Still to this day, I can't believe how much trash was on the trail. I mean, people take their dogs and their families for a nice walk and bike ride through the trails. I decided by by cleaning up the rail by cleaning up the trails, I could make it nicer looking. 
I really do not think that I can come up with a correct answer as, as to how I educated others on my capstone project. I like the outdoors and I like taking walks and hikes. As a Boy Scout, I developed an appreciation for the outdoors and cleaning up the environment. This is why I chose my this is why I chose my project. I educated my advising group uh, and, and along with Mr. Fonda's group by telling them about how I was help, helping to clean up the rail trail. I also educated my family. You see, my mother is the number one advocate for clean earth and clean living. She makes her own soaps and granola all while pitching in and recycling and having five children strapped to her hip. She, she was happy to help me clean up the rail trail. At, at this point, I'm going to speak about the obstacles that I faced. First, I was not able to make it to the rail trail race because I couldn't find a ride. I couldn't always rely on my mom, who was either at work or taking care of my younger siblings. So I had to change. So I had to change plans and focus on cleaning up the rail trail. Second, I, after a lot of phone calls and checking out the website for the town of Franklin, I I could not seem to make it to any of the board meetings. None of the days or times matched up with my schedule, and I'm. And I'm not a busy kid. The meetings took place every two weeks of every two months, which doesn't seem like much to a kid, but to a parent, time is very important. Most of the meetings were held during the summer months when my family had already set meet already set plans, and I guess you could say that I might have or slightly per uh, procrastinated. Let's get into the positive results of my project. I was able to clean up. I was able to clean the rail trail with the help of my mom and uncle. The weather was a great help too. I was very happy to know that Mr. Kaplan works on the rail trail committee. He helped me by giving me some information about the rail trail. While cleaning it, while cleaning the trail itself, I felt good knowing I was making a difference by picking up the trash. It also renewed my love for the environment, and, last, and lastly, I learned that I was able to communicate with the Rail Trail com Committee without any problems. I would like to thank my mother and uncle, Ms. Magar Mrs. Magaro, Mr. and Mrs. Kaplan, Mr. Fonzo, and finally, my advising group, oh, I forgot, Mr. B and Mrs. M Mrs. Nato. And and finally, for my advisor, which I already said it, um, but that's whatever, uh, for bringing up with all my shenanigans. Thank you. State Representative Jeff Roy and State Representative Michael Soder for joining us today. I know your schedules are super busy, but it means a lot for us that you took time out to come here. So thank you very much for your time. I would also like to take the time to thank Mrs. Kaplan and Mrs. Sunday, our capstone coordinators, for all of the work that they did for you. Advisors, the two who presented today, Mr. Afonso and Mrs. Magaro, as well as <laughs> as well as Mrs. Mooney, and Mrs. Kelleher, Mrs. Spagoni, Mrs. Herlicek, Mrs. Lorivier, and Mr. McSweeney, who presented on, on yesterday and on Wednesday.
very special thank you to Mrs. Lerivier, who retired from BFCCPS last year, started her seventh grade students on their capstone projects, and came back this year to watch all three days of our capstone presentations and support the students who she started along the way. So thank you. Lettering, Mrs. Sharon, Mr. Healy, Mr. Perna, Mrs. Schwab, Mrs. Tappan, Mrs. Basili, Mrs. Fallon, and the faculty and staff that supported our students throughout their projects. Thank you so much for your dedication. Our grade eight room parents, Lisa Bogner, Iris Park, and April Hugona, who helped throughout this process, as well as Susan Ferreira, Gilmyra Mascado, Karen Morin, and John Rita for your help um, putting together today. our presentations today as well as the last two days and for your support of your students throughout this process. It truly is um, what shows our mission um, is the parent support for this project, what the students learn along the way, the community service that they do, as well as the character that they exhibit throughout this process. But it would not be possible without their parents' support of this process as well as the school. So thank you all very much for everything you did for your students.